There's a courthouse square There's a swap meet there Local folk in the trading local wares There's a game of tag On the other side Kids being kids in a simpler place in time Running through their innocence in life It's America It's Americana It's red, white, and blue It's me, it's you, it's the finest It's America Like meat and taters Land of the free Home of the brave It's the greatest It's America On sign at the Cadillac bar, and some good old boys in there talking about nice car. There's a game of pool on the other side. Nothing fancy here like mom's apple pie. Good old boys in the living, the good old life. It's America. It's Americana. It's red, white, and blue. It's me, it's you, it's the finest. It's America. Like meat and taters. Did you ever think about going maybe to Austin? 
Um, mm, I personally went to Austin in the mid seventies. Okay. And just to check it out and see what was going on. And there's a lot going on and even more now. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, there's plenty of pickers in Austin. Uh, you shake a tree and five of them fall out and <laughs> there's another eight up in there, you know, who are songwriters and singers, etc. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Who, who influenced you? Who, when you were young and you were starting to listen, uh, who were the guys that really blew your hair back? Well, after the Stones and after that, that introduction to actually music and performing it and being a piece of it, mm -hmm. um, then um, we started settling in. And very much an influence was Hank Sr. Okay. Loved his stuff. It was that was my mom's favorite. You know? Oh, I hear and, you. Uh, we listened to that all the time around the house. And uh, yeah, Hank Senior, Haggard, and then once you got up into the mid seventies, uh, that's when Willie was first come, you know, doing his yeah. red, red headed stranger. Yep. And that album, the one before it, that phases and stages album, I believe is a better album. There's there's the really uh, yeah. That's a great album. Was, I think that was one right before Redheaded Stranger. Okay. Yeah. So this is after he left Nashville, because when he yeah, was in, and he went. That's when he went back to Austin. When he was in Nashville, Tommy Alsop was actually the producer of his album. Gotcha. Got his hair cut real short, put right. him in one of those Beatles suits. Uh, yep. He hated it was every... A he, oh, hey. <laughs> he hated every second of it, and he said, I'm leaving, I'm going back to Texas, have a nice day, folks. And history was made. And that is history right there. But the record company wanted to shape him and do something different. And Cochran... Check your history books. Is the one that got Willie his first big recording contract. Wow! The company wanted the Hank to do it. He says, "I got, I got news for you. There's one of the writers right here. That that's the guy you. That's the guy you want to uh, contract. And it was Willie. Okay. Yeah. He was a DJ, wasn't he? Uh, uh, Willie? Yeah. I don't know that part of him. Yeah. No, I don't know. Although he did, he did write a song that is uh, my my wife and I's favorite. Not necessarily him singing it, but when Patsy Cline sung "Crazy," uh, we both just pretty much lost it, <laughs> and still do. Pretty strong, yeah. Right, rather strong. Then he stole it. He uh, sold it for fifty bucks. That was uh, needed the money. That was "Hello Walls." Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. No, no. He 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 kept the crazy. Well, good for him. But his hello walls that uh, Farron Young did. Oh, yeah. Farron Young. Yeah. Um, who does Billy Who does Billy listen to other than Chet Atkins for his guitar work? Because it's, it's unique. It really is. Um, I mean, he, he, is he a Danny Gatton fan at all? Nothing that he's like purchase records or you know back in the day records yeah we were doing some of the same halls that billy uh, that uh danny was doing okay. back in the 70s in dc mm -hmm. and uh i'm not sure billy ever really heard danny but he had an ear full of hearing about danny <laughs> <laughs> yeah well there was a lot said about him oh back well then. and and he was worth every breath <laughs> yeah amazing artist and truly was um, when you when you cozy up to the mic and you start singing, do you have anybody in mind, or is it just your bird and I'm you bird. sing the way you sing? Yeah, yeah. How'd you develop your style? It was sort of mixing it all together, mm -hmm. you know, because there was a period of time that the the thing to do was you know to sound something like Willie Nelson, right, and. We were hitting some of that real close, uh, and then I expanded it into my own style with um, some of the tones to get your attention mm -hmm. to say, "Hey, you listen to this," you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you know, and um, but from there on, it's just it's 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 gut and feel. Okay. And well, I think that that's that's where we really establish our music through all of that. And the same thing when those guys are playing, or if I'm singing or Charlie's singing, it's all gut and feel. Okay. And uh, and that's 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 what we offer. We're we're ha- we're four guys having fun to begin with. That's what I picked up on. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, it is fun. I mean, we, I, when I, we leave a, leave a gig and Charlie and I mostly ride together and, and we'll hash it out of how the night went and all that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, that was fun. That was good. That was good. You know, um, I haven't, I've had a dry up on writing and, um, Charlie's been so busy. He hadn't been able to really sit down and pen something. So. Okay. Um, Roger, the drummer, uh, has brought a couple new songs to our attention in that. Uh, oh, yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, got your own Don Henley. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't know if we'll ever do another album. You know, we, we, we've, we've actually got a lot of stuff, um, uh, in the can that we, went back and changed some of the stuff that's all we've already recorded and right. you know for lack of a better word greatest hits okay and we'd go back and uh we've worked on over 20 some songs rearranging them some and um and making them a, a, just a little different sound and um i thought we'd uh come out with the greatest hits album so gotcha. well you you we'll gonna see where to, that runs you're gonna have to tell me when that's out because i'm gonna need that um, what's up for you guys? Where are you, where, where are you playing the rest of the summer? What are you doing? What's the future hold for y'all? Uh, we have, I, 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 I call it our never ending, uh, deck bar tour now. Cause that. the majority of what we play are, and they're the greatest places cause people are relaxed. They're out to have fun mm-hmm. and we're there to relax and have fun, fun. <laughs> and so it's sort of you know it's, it's a nice little join and um but we we do uh the big al tiki bar up in ken island yeah um and i'm gonna tell you that it's one of my favorite spots you know why because every place i'm gonna tell you is one of my favorite places <laughs> But up north, a little further up north, up the bay of Tallchester, Maryland, there's a really neat deck bar up there uh, called the Shanty at Tallchester Marina. I've heard and of it. And we play up there about it. We, we do Big Al like a handful of times a year. Tallchester, Docks, uh, Sunset Grill in Oxford, Maryland. We're there. Yeah. We're there, two day, we're there Saturday. Okay. From six to nine. And... Um, there and then MR Ducks. We've been playing MR Ducks for 37 years or something like that. We got okay. a handful of gigs in there. And we get, um, I just don't want to miss anybody. Um, and then we do, um, we don't do a whole lot of nighttime stuff. Staying out till. Driving home at three or four o'clock in the morning no longer interests me. No, 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 no. That's for young folk. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, and so uh, we take these six to nine, one to fours, two to fives, you know, three to six. Yeah, I'm in for that. I got gotcha. you. And uh, or you know, I prefer. I'm not the guy that goes out there and plays 45 minutes and takes a 15 minute break. Right. I just soon play two hours. Yeah, I noticed that. And take a half an hour break and come back and play an hour. Okay. Um, or hour and a half, half an hour break, hour and a half. Okay. That's what... Because you get up there, and by the time you get people interested in what's going on, it's, uh, everybody goes, well, I'll be back in half an hour. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Uh-huh. You know? I'd rather take just one decent break and go up there and play. 
Well, let me ask I'm you. I'm there to play. They're there to listen. So there you go. Let's put it all Everybody's together. got their own job. Yeah. Any interesting story about that beautiful git fiddle you got, that Gibson? Mm, no, it's just I haven't been very kind to her. Oh, <laughs> her dog, no. But it's that, and that's a, that thing sounds good. Oh, it does. That's a sweet, sweet tone you get out of that thing. I, um, yeah, it's, it's, well, I keep telling everybody it's not that old, but it is 32 years old. Okay. Well, that's getting uh, up there. Yeah. And, uh, I do have another 200 that I don't take out. Um, that's a 62. Ooh. And that thing is about the rings, about as nice as anything you've ever put in your hands. Yep. So I love the J200. I wanted one all my life. In fact, Mel Price, who was a big yeah. uh, Eastern Shore uh, country star, um, who lived right across the street from me in Eastern Maryland, okay. literally, li right across from my mom and dad's house. They were like, Right face to face across the street. And I'd see that I'd see that big station wagon pull up there with a the trailer behind it and, and all the uh, Santa Fe Rangers would they'd all pile in there together and take off for a weekend or whatever and I was like, That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty, That's cool. pretty cool. That's pretty cool, you know. But Mel, uh he had a music store. He had one in Seaford, he had one in Easton, but he had a Gibson on a pedestal that that just spun around in the in the in the showcase window and just really slowly came around and and it was there and I'd walk by it just to keep looking at it. Mm -hmm. I just love that thing and I ended up buying that guitar. Uh, I'm not sure it's the original owner. I think it is, but he bought it and he advertised it in the local paper. Wow. And it, I just saw Gibson J200, so I said, hey, can Gotta I look come at look it. at this thing? Yeah. And he didn't want much money for it, and I didn't have much money to give him, and so it worked out. It was a great marriage. And I actually ended up selling that to get the that black one that I played okay. out, the one I play out with. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah. And but it's just got that sweet tone. She's got the tone. There's... Those Gibson acoustics are, are, to me, are hard to beat. Country music, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, Martins are a little brighter, but you know it's perfect for bluegrass. Yeah, you know. Um, but I, I just love that sound of those, of those Gibsons. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Um, when, when do you think the uh, the remastering of of the best of will be? will be available for uh, consumption. I'd like to think next spring. Okay. Um, By the way, where do you guys record? Oh, Monkey Boy Productions, Easton, Maryland. Okay. That's Roger, our drummer. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> He's Monkey Boy? Yeah. Okay. He's Monkey Boy. He's got a nice little, little setup. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he... Um, He's been at it. I mean, he's 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 um he's been doing it close to forty years. Well, if you can record drums, you can record anything. Um, Bird Dog, I really want to thank you for coming by our studios. I know you've been on a whirlwind tour of <laughs> Southern America, but we really appreciate you coming by because in the uh, in the annals of people who play and enjoy music on the eastern shore of Maryland and Virginia. You guys have uh, have tested the uh, the stand of time, and we appreciate you. We love you. And those of you out there who are looking for the joy of live music, you'll do no better than the Bird Dog and the Road Kings. This is Billy Earl on Del Marvelous Americana, WSDL 90.7. Namaste. Adios. She's my rainy day woman She's always there Whenever I'm in need of
have a good time She said, oh, he's my mind She hold me tight, hold me oh so near When the forecast looks like tears are come a calling Before they start a falling Oh, Rebecca, looks like rain It looks like rain Whether or not she's on my mind She's waiting in the shadows when the sun does shine And she'll be there When my world ain't clear Clouded mind and tears like rain There's not a one that can ease the pain Like my backdoor love My sweet young Rebecca Oh, Rebecca It looks like rain Oh, Rebecca It looks like rain Let it rain Baby, that's 
it's quite all right Where were you last night? Del Marvelous Americana here on WSDL 90.7 FM and streaming at delmarvapublicmedia.org. We produce this show at Delmarva Public Media Salisbury University Studio and we get production help from Angela Semig and Brian Russo, who is our managing director. Remember, you can find this program on the YouTube channel, on Pack 14 on our website, and make sure and visit the show page at delmarvapublicmedia.org. Of course, special thanks to my guests today. Make sure and check out their music and or art and everything they do. I'm Billy Earl, and thanks for listening to Del Marvelous Americana. And if you remember one thing from today, just remember that a life without music and art just ain't hardly worth it. Swap meet there Local folk in the trading local ways There's a game of tag On the other side Kids being kids in a simpler place in time Running through their renaissance in life It's America It's Americana It's red, white, and blue It's me, it's you, it's the finest It's America